on 49ers Cal High Sports Report presented by U.S. Bank. Huge league games from all around the Bay Area. We'll show you California at San Ramon Valley. Leland battles Live Oak and Overfelt takes on Del Mar. We have thrilling volleyball action with Aragon and Menlo Atherton. Water polo featuring Miramonte and San Ramon Valley and the Kennedy football team finding great success despite battling a culture of violence. It's all next on 49ers Cal High Sports Report. Welcome to 49ers Cal High Sports Report presented by U.S. Bank. I'm Robert Bronstein. And I'm Aubrey Tolliver. We start tonight in the Diablo Foothill League where Clayton Valley has dominated its first two league opponents winning by a combined 84 to 10. That's pretty impressive. The ugly Eagles traveling to Orinda to meet Miramonte. The Matadors also 2-0 in league and outscoring their opponents 96 to 9. The battle for first place in Orinda Friday night. The Miramonte cheer team all fired up for their Matadors Friday night, but Clayton Valley gets on the board first. Give it to Cade Carter who finds some open space and walks it in for the touchdown 7-0 Ugly Eagles. CV looking for more on their next drive. Logan Sumter throws it over the middle to Carter who makes the catch and watch this Ugly Eagle fly 50 yards to the house and it's 14-0 Clayton Valley. The Uggs continue to show off their aerial attack later in the quarter, and it's Sumter heaving it deep for Rayshon Jackson, and he hauls it in, sheds off a tackle, and races in for six. 21-0 Clayton Valley after one, and Miramonte answers back in the second. Tyler Lowe takes a handoff and plunges in for the TD. PAT no good, it's 21-6, but Clayton Valley fires back on the next drive. Toss it to Makai Gervais. He runs past one defender, breaks a couple tackles, runs across the field. Field, down the far sideline, <laughs> he's way gone. 28-6, Ugly Eagles. Miramonte trying to cut the deficit before the half of the pass is picked off by Priest Preston in the end zone to stop the Matadors' threat. The Mats get one more drive just seconds before the half. Matt Meredith throws a prayer to Reed Callister who makes the catch in traffic. The two-point conversion is good. It's 28-14 Clayton Valley at halftime. But the second half was all Uggs. Carson Sumter powers his way in for the score and Clayton Valley cruises to a 49-14 victory. North Bay Sports coverage is brought to you by South County Chrysler of Marin. Off to San Francisco now as Lincoln takes on Mission at Kizar Stadium. Mission looking to get their offense started in the first. But Deshaun Crawford forces the fumble and Albert Moore is right there for the recovery to set Lincoln inside the five-yard line. Just a few plays later, Javon Baker takes it in himself. Touchdown Lincoln, 7-0 after one. The Mustangs threatening again in the second. Give it to Crawford who plunges into the end zone for the touchdown. Two-point conversion good and it's 15-0 Lincoln. But back come the Bears. McKinley Oliver heaves it deep to a wide open Matt Cohn who hauls it in and he is gone. 65 yards to the house to cut the deficit to seven. Lincoln trying to score just before the half but the pass is going to be picked off by DeMar Simmons to stop the Mustang drive. 15 to eight Lincoln at the half. The Mustangs make it stick in the third Baker with the quarter back keeper he sheds a couple of tackles and dives into the end zone for the touchdown 22 to 8 Lincoln Mustangs but mission answers back on their next drive Gemma Riga Burroughs takes the low snap scrambles around the pocket and connects with Delaney who makes the catch and turns on the Jets sprinting past everyone going 91 yards to the house 22-15 Lincoln Mustangs in the lead the Bears looking to continue the rally, but Deshaun Crawford comes up big time once again. Deshaun jumping the route and gets the interception, and he runs for a while to set the Mustangs in good position. Lincoln would score a few plays later as the Mustangs win it. 29-15 was the final. Lincoln going to 2-0 in the City League with the victory. First volleyball action of the night with California School for the Deaf hosting Holy Names. Jada and Jay Dawson set it up for Malia Zarnosa for the first Eagle point of the match. The Eagles strong from the start. Malia Thornton with six aces in the first, and the Eagles win the first 25-11. Kyle goes up 3-1 in the second, and it's Jada Dawson with the block to extend that lead. Then it's Zarnosa with a dig to Jay Dawson, who sets it up for Thornton, and the Eagles are absolutely rolling. And here's Thornton to Jade and Jada with the fantastic off-balance hit. A great play there. And to top off the seconds, Arnosa with the kill. And Cal would go on to win set two by 18. 
but down by two sets. Holy Names fighting hard to get back in it. Leah Wedman with the perfect serve to tie it up at five. Now the score 15 11 Eagles. Elani Bravo to Emily Leal to Teresa Asensio, who gets it just over the blocker, but the Eagles showing why they are undefeated in league. Jade Dawson feeds Esther Beiser in the middle, and the Eagles roll their way to a three set victory. Now 10 0 in the Bay Counties League. The Harker girls are 9 and 2 in league taking on 6 and 5 Lindbrook first quarter. A lot of wisdom at Harker school. This is Abby Wisdom who decides to take the shot and that was a smart idea. One nothing Eagles. In the second now Alicia Zhu up ahead to Wisdom and that was smart again as Wisdom fires to make it 3 nothing Eagles. Lindbrook in transition Ria Shrivastava ahead to Margarita Sokolenko over to Allison Louis who scores a nice play by the Vikings. But Harker dominates from there. Keeper Arushi Madan way ahead to Wisdom who scores again for Harker and later it's due to Claudia Opris who fires from distance and scores. Now here's Elizabeth Field swimming ahead and passing to Zhu in front of the net and Alicia powers it home. A nice play here by number three. We finish with a wide open Leia Anderson in front of the net and Leia scores as Harker remains all alone in second place in the El Camino division. Wisdom leading the way with seven goals. Each week, we present the Players of the Week in a rap produced by the Hip Hop Department at the Rikus Center. The Rikus Center producing an original rap every week based on last week's games. Here are this week's Players of the Week. Yeah, Rikus Center, your Players of the Week. First up, make way for the senior, Dylan Grady. Breaking opponents' hearts, got them feeling achy. Bringing the muscle on D, a strong will and safety. Had fans standing up like the real Slim Shady. When he grabbed an interception for the Menlo Knights. And his 19 tackles up and come from behind to get the win. Allowing no points in the second half. Dylan's a force to be reckoned with. Yeah, I'll second that. Lead the matter, go from Granada, Octavio Morales. What? Like Alice, he could fit through the smallest hole for rabbits. Okay. The senior running back when against Amador Valley in a very big league game. Is he a man or a stallion? 27 carries and two touchdowns. He's moving 185 yards and barely touched ground. His team now 6-1 in the season. The best start in eight years. Still league undefeated. These are your players of the week. Right is center. Stanford Healthcare brings us great information on sports-related injuries every week. Here's the 49ers head team physician, Dr. Tim McAdams, with this week's tip. Even though the ACL ligament of the knee gets the most attention, the MCL, or medial collateral ligament, are common and can lead to significant impairment if not treated properly. The MCL protects the knee against valgus stress, in which the lower leg goes outward from the thigh the classic example is an offensive lineman who has another player fall onto his outer knee and place a valgus load. Knee bracing has proven effective at decreasing the risk of MCL injuries in football linemen. MCL tears can be graded one to three, with three being the most severe. Unlike the ACL, which is inside the knee and bathed in fluid that limits primary healing after injury, the MCL is outside the knee capsule and has excellent healing potential. Coming up, the block construction NCS blockbuster game is Granada meets Monta Vista. And back to the hardwood for Aragon and Menlo Atherton as 49ers Cal High Sports Report rolls along. When you're ready to buy a house, a mortgage from U.S. Bank could help make it possible. And a dedicated financial partner will be with you every step of the way. See about pre-qualifying today. U.S. Bank. The power of possible. Defender twice my size. Bring it. Down by two? I got this. I love this game as much as the pros. I may not play for the Warriors, but I have the same doctors. Teaming up to keep the pros and me at the top of our game.
We got it for you. South County Chrysler Jeep Dodge Ram. Blockbuster game. Yeah. Tonight, we have a cross-division battle here in the East Bay League with the Monta Vista Mustangs hosting the 6-1 Granada Matadors. Now, both teams come in hungry to keep their league title hopes alive. The Mustangs will be looking at QB Jack Stewartson making the calls under center, who is averaging 193 yards passing each game. While the Matadors enter tonight with a fierce trio on offense, QB J.J. Knight, along with running backs Octavio Morales and Zach McIntyre, have led Granada to being nearly unstoppable all season. The hunt for the East Bay League title comes down to the wire in this week's NCS Block Instruction Blockbuster Game. It was homecoming week and the 12th man showed up big. Always a great squad, probably one of the best in the Bay Area. Matadors will get started by punting this one away, and it's Rudy, Rudy, Rudy Ayala recovers the loose ball, and Granada now takes over. That next play, J.J. Knight with the switcheroo to Zach McIntyre, the man I told you about in the opener. He'll get the Matadors on the board first. Next quarter, Jack Stewartson, the other guy I told you about in the opener, but on the opposite team. He'll throw this deep ball. Look at that arm, and it's caught on the other end by Matt Percheska. First down, Mustangs. Next play, though, Stewartson relying on Percheska again with this slant pass to put the Stangs on the board, but will fail the PAT. As we inch closer to the end of the half, Granada looking to go deep, but it's the star basketball player, Nate Ruchetta, leaping in the air for the pick. And get out your odometers, everyone, because he is going to run for a while. Mustangs would then take over inside the opponent's territory. Stewartson would lead the charge down to the goal line. He can do it himself by plowing his way and gets piled on by a bunch of defenders and it's ruled a touchdown and MV heads into the locker room leading 13-7. Next half, and it was the Jack Stewartson show because he carried that momentum the rest of the game. Kyle Hayner with this catch, and it's good for six. Then with five minutes left in the third, seriously, Jack Stewartson for Heisman, ladies and gentlemen, because Prochesco will catch the fourth TD on the night for Jack. Mustangs lead 27-7. But let's not forget, we also got to give this Mustangs defense some love because as we close out the quarter, Monta Vista locks down the secondary with Noah Rivas picking this one off and the Mustangs gallop into victory with Jack Stewartson on the night with four TDs, so I caught up with him after the game. I mean, everyone, the defense played great. Receivers ran good routes, running back to the job, offensive line they did their job. It was a team win. In Danville for the Blockbuster Game, I'm Austin Manili, 49ers Cal High Sports Report. First place in the Peninsula Bay Division on the line is Menlo Atherton hosts Aragon. The Lady Dons looking good early. Gabrielle Oaks to Della Trimble to Ella Sears, who smashes it to the hardwood. But Menlo Atherton rallies back later in the set. Emma Spitt passes to Mariah Grover, who bumps it over to her twin sister, Natalie Grover, for the kill. Emma keeps the momentum going to win set one. The Bears go Natalie Grover to Mariah Grover to Spitt for the point. M.A. continuing on the attack in the second. Erica Fisher with the bump. Mariah Grover to Spint with a monster kill. Aragon trying to stay in it with this great play. Ali Thaw makes contact with the ball. Abby Legaspi gets the ball back to Thaw, who bumps it over the net and into no man's land for the point. But the Bears take the second. Fisher to Mariah Grover, who backsets Marit Hoyam, who crushes it. M.A. firing on all cylinders in the third. Now Fisher on the bump. Mariah Grover on the back set to UC Davis commit Alicia Letvin. The Bears finish it off here as M.A. goes Natalie Grover to Mariah Grover to Hoyam, who puts it away as M.A. wins in three sets to go to 10-1 in league and take sole possession of first place in the Bay Division. Next up, undefeated Mountain View hosting Los Altos Tuesday night. We're a minute in. The Eagles' Alex Brett from five meters out gets his team on the board. Los Altos would take the 2-0 lead with Kyle Johnson passing it to Adam Hollingworth and the junior Rockets it past three guys for the goal. Less than a minute left in the quarter, the Spartans' Aram Ham shows off his strong arm. It's 2-1 Eagles after one. Move ahead to the third, MV down 4-3, but there's Tony Nardelli to tie it up for the Spartans. And a minute later, Nathaniel Randolph gives his team its first lead of the night and would go on to lead 6-4, but the Eagles, they're resilient. Juntao Ren brings his team within a goal, and in the final quarter, Boris Palant sends a floater into the goal to tie this game up with three minutes to go. Eagles trying to go ahead, but here's an amazing save by Samuel Vincent to preserve the tie. And then on the other side of the pool, Randolph, seven meters out. It's good. And the Mountain View Spartans preserve their perfect season. Randolph, the difference maker in this one. 
Each week, 49ers Prep and South County Chrysler bring us the Coach of the Week Award. Here is the 49ers two-time Pro Bowl fullback Kyle Juszczyk with this week's announcement. Hi, I'm 49ers fullback Kyle Juszczyk, here to announce this week's 49ers Prep Charlie Wiedemeyer Memorial Coach of the Week presented by U.S. Bank. This week's award goes to Andrew Hill High School Head Coach Mike Holt. The Andrew Hill Falcons were able to keep their league winning streak alive against the Prospect Panthers thanks to a rushing attack that totaled over 300 yards and four touchdowns. As a part of this award, Andrew Hill High School will receive a $1,000 grant from the 49ers Foundation. Coach Holt will also be invited to a 49ers practice at the SAP Performance Facility where he will be presented his award by our head coach, Kyle Shanahan, and will be recognized on the field before one of our home games later in the season. Congratulations to head coach Mike Holt, this week's Charlie Wiedemeyer Memorial Coach of the Week. Coming up, the Peninsula Bay Division showdown with Menlo Atherton and Menlo. But first, here's our Cupertino Electric Top 10 Volleyball Power Rankings. The Rikus Center is well known as an elite athletic training facility, but you might not be aware of all the ways the center touches the lives of our community. In addition to athletic fitness, nature awareness, and creative arts, the Rikus Center offers a diverse community service program, allowing students to gain leadership and life skills, learning the responsibilities of a real work environment, from working with young children to helping veterans with archery. The community service program will teach students the demands of a professional environment while fulfilling their high school's community service service requirements. F Tony, why nice? 15 week Y Sif. Why left out? I left AC drift. Once he takes one step up, we got him. Stack formation, created our separation, explosive down the sideline. Play action, Garoppolo dropping. Great catch by Use Check. Marquise Goodwin, stone cold kiddo. We finished those last five games playing the best we had all year. We get better or worse, you never stay the same. I need to make sure we get better. I believe when we go out on the field, we're gonna have a chance to win every single Sunday. High school sports builds character, builds communities, builds legacies. And Block Construction plays a big part in this, building state-of-the-art athletic facilities all around the Bay Area. With an unwavering commitment to teamwork, innovation, and quality workmanship, Block Construction places great value on dedication, performance, and successful outcomes. Block projects inspire excellence and are a place where memories and legacies are built. Block Construction, we care, we prepare, we perform. The Menlo Atherton Bears are having a great season with a very talented team. The Bears featuring outstanding top recruit Daniel Hamouli and one of the nation's top sophomores in Troy Franklin. Yes, they are very talented, but the Bears meeting a surging Menlo team, winners of three of their last four games. The Knights are also 1-0 in league. It's Menlo at Menlo Atherton on Friday. Here come the MA Bears hosting crosstown rival Menlo. Jack Alexander back at quarterback for the Bears. He hands it to Destin Hawkins, who skips his way in for the first score of the game. The Knights trying to hold back the prolific Bears offense. That's Brian Martyr with the sack, but the Bears explode from there. It starts with some D. Justin Anderson racing down this pass, and Anderson picks it off. Then Alexander throwing high and deep for Malik Johnson in stride. 14-13 Menlo Atherton in the second. Still in the second here, Alexander throwing for a superstar sophomore, Troy Franklin, who makes a diving catch. 21-3 Bears and more MAD here. Heavy pressure on the quarterback. Justin Anderson with an amazing one-handed interception. More Bears and they are happy to have Alexander back. A pretty pass here as Jack hits Joey Alshausen for another MA touchdown. And it's more pressure here as David Tafuna is in for the sack. The Bears looking really good. Here's Alexander lifting it into the end zone for Franklin, 35-3 Bears. And this will close out the scoring as Daymar Sean Payton takes it 10 yards and the MA Bears behind Alexander's huge night wins it 42-3. The Bears 3-0 in the Bay League. The Mount Eden Monarchs getting pumped up to take on the Ensenal Jets Tuesday night. We start off with some Jets action. Isabel Guillen to Sydney Williams with a deep set to Madeline McCaskill who delivers. But the Mount Eden Monarchs take the first. Naya Christensen to Jada Raquel Hatola to Caitlin Vu who tips it over the defense for Mount Eden 25-22. Second set, and it's all in, so now Maya McKinney passing to Williams, setting it up for Jessica 
by Njargal, who tools it off the block as the Jets have the lead. The Jets continue to bring the heat. McCaskill to Williams, who shoots it to McKinney, who fires a rocket, and Ensenal would take the second. Into the third, the Monarchs staying focused. Mashiko Yusumitsu finds Hutala, setting it up for Michael Lopez, who splits the block. But Ensenal gets the third. McCaskill to Williams, setting up McKinney, and she does what she does best. It's two sets to one, Ensenal. The fourth set was a long one. Darla called to Williams, connecting with McKinney, who rips it home as the Jets lead by two. Mount Eden staying close, Yoshimitsu to Hatala, back to Yoshimitsu who finds a hole in the D, and Mount Eden trails by one, but the Jets take the fourth, call a terrific dig to Williams who dumps it over the net for the game-winning point for Ensenal, 25-21 in the fourth, an outstanding night for McKinney with 22. Each week, U.S. Bank brings us stories of inspirational athletes who have overcome adversity in their lives to succeed in school and in sports. Aubrey, tonight we feature a team of players who have gone through incredible tragedy in their lives. Somehow they have persevered to see success on and off the field. On a hot movie. Football practice at Kennedy High School. This Richmond team proud to take the practice field with a perfect 6-0 record, getting ready for a big game with rival El Cerrito. It's like fluid right now. We, we working right and it's going to keep working right. I feel like we got a big game on, on Friday against El Cerrito and I feel like we got a chance to win that. We just got to come together as a team and a family like we, we've been doing, clicking. To be successful, this Kennedy team has put aside the tragedy nearly every player has seen in their lives. Last year, uh, I was a junior, I was playing. We were playing that Mac, and then I got a call while I was playing. My brother passed away. He got shot, two shots. At the age of five, my, my dad was, he was killed. Uh, I, don't, I don't really like to speak on it, but you know, he was killed. My brother got shot four, four times, different places, one in the head, like three in the body. The Kennedy coaches and administrators are working to end the culture of violence surrounding these players, a culture too many of them have seen firsthand. I have kids that's been shot, so um, I would probably say close to 70, 80%, I'm almost certain, 80% have got to have family members that have been killed by gun violence. The players use football as a safety net, a place to go not only to have fun, but to work with their teammates to improve their grades, to make their fallen family members proud. I wasn't a good student, like I had bad grades and stuff. You know how most kids just want to see, he, they look at that and then just, I'm, I'm just going to give up on life. That pushed me because my brother always wanted me to play football. He told me he always gonna come to my games and he didn't get to get a chance to do that. And I really loved him. So then um, I just said, I'm gonna do this for him. So I got all A's my fourth quarter, eighth grade. I came in ninth grade, just doing my thing, all A's. The Eagles have an incredible bond with their experiences away from the field, but it's football that brings this team together as a family. Everybody out here, we from different backgrounds. Like it might be somebody all the way from across town, and it might be somebody from over here. You know, I feel like football just brings us together like it's supposed to. And we a family out here. We don't worry about none of that when we out here. If you got something to do, you got something to do, and that's out there. That's right here. It's a safe haven for us. I feel like. Still, the memory of family members not around, leaving empty spaces in the bleachers on game day, is something every player deals with in their own way. That's absolutely. Every day, you know. Every day before I play, you know, or anything, whatever I do, you know, I always talk to him before I leave, you know, just help me through the day. The success on the field is leading to success in the classroom. Jermaine has a 3.8 GPA. I was up to high school, you know, I want that Division I scholarship, football, but you know, they say you always gotta have a second second plan, because you know, life, you, you roll them dice and it's not always what you want. So, you know, I just plan, you know, if the, the football don't work out, I'm trying to become a nurse or a doctor. And that's how the Kennedy Eagles plan to break the cycle of violence for their team. Hard work on the field and in the classroom to have an opportunity for change. But these kids are hungry. This group is a hungry bunch and they, they want to get out and they're, they, they're striving to be their best and I'm proud of them. Unfortunately, the Eagles did not win their game against El Cerrito, so the Eagles will now have to overcome that adversity, but certainly nothing they haven't gone through before. Yeah, nothing new for the boys. Yeah. 
The Kennedy Eagles are Be Human Inspirational Athletes this week. To nominate your favorite inspirational athlete, download the Be Human app in the App Store and use the tag Inspirational Athlete to share what makes your nominees so inspirational. Be Human is humanizing social media. Be Human, inspire and be inspired. Coming up, our South County Chrysler Game of the Week, it's Del Mar taking on Overfell. And back to the hardwood for a marathon match between Midi and San Ignatius. Steve Greenwood's water pump repair business and Tri-Counties Bank have a history together. So when the chance to start a company that manufactures the parts he uses came down the pipe, he knew who to turn to. Branch manager Daryl Polkentine created a business line of credit, allowing flexible funding to start the company and fund initial manufacturing operations, maintaining a strong cash flow for his flowing enterprise. That service to be pumped about. For personalized problem solving, switch to Tri-Counties Bank. Service with solutions. Sereno Group is committed to giving you the very best service when buying or selling a home, but we're also committed to giving back to the communities we serve. We are encouraged to see the good and uphold it. Sereno Group has pledged to give 1% of our gross commissions to charitable and community groups making a positive difference. Sereno Group has donated more than $2 million to these groups since the inception of the 1% for Good program in 2012. Go to our website to see the list of recipients. Sereno Group, our community is your community. Hi, Ed Graziani, a founding member of the Serena Group. I'm proud to support high school sports on the 49er Cal High Sports Report. Hi, I'm Kathleen Fazine in Palo Alto, and I'm proud to support high school athletes on the 49ers Cal High Sports Report. 49ers Cal High Sports Report is brought to you by these fine companies who care about high school sports. By Block Construction, together building greatness by Cupertino Electric, the company delivering power and possibilities and celebrating student athletes making a positive impact. By the Rikus Center, where goals and dreams become a reality. And by Stanford Healthcare. We are back at the NBC Sports Studio with the South County Chrysler Game of the Week. This week's game is a battle in the Santa Teresa division between Oberfeld and Del Mar. The Royals from Oberfeld come into the game with a perfect 6-0 record on the season. I know both these teams doing really well. Yeah. For really the best they've done in a long time. Mm -hmm. And so this was a big game. The Del Mar Dons sport a 5-1 record, 2-1 in league. The Dons looking to upend the Royals in a first place game on Friday night. It is our South County Chrysler Game of the Week, and Aubrey was there. A lot riding on this Santa Teresa division game between Del Mar and Overfelt. The Overfelt offense on the field, Ulysses Reyes with a pretty pass to Melvin Bellard. A great catch there, but Del Mar tries to one-up that catch with this awesome grab by Fernando Vargas. And there's no score after one. Less than two minutes into the second, watch this one closely. Ulysses Alvarez waits for his open lane, and he is gone, turning on the burners for a 56-yard touchdown run. 6-0 Royals, but not so fast. Dons at midfield quarterback Marcus Morales breaks to the near side and gets his team into the red zone just short of the goal line. And on the very next play, Isaac Black takes the shovel and takes it on the outside edge. We are tied at six with eight minutes left of the half. Black gives his team the lead. Three minutes later, he breaks free up the middle, and that's a 50-yarder to put the Dons up by a touchdown. The Orioles trying to tie it up before the half, fourth down, but Vargas and the Dons have other plans. That caused a turnover on down, so we get to see Black kick it into high gear yet again. This time, it's for 60 yards. Isaac Black pretending like this is a track meet. Well, if it is, Alvarado is competing too because up next, Ulysses goes 45 yards to the house. Some great blocking by his linemen there. And the score is 18-12 Del Mar at the half. Third quarter, the Dons reaching into their playbook with a double pass, but Overfelt is all over it. Quincy Robinson intercepts it at the Dons 20, and he runs up the sideline. He gets thrown out of bounds near the 20. The Royals wouldn't score, but no worries. Del Mar on their own six. Damien Herrera sacks the QB in the end zone. That is a safety. And the Royals return team now on the field, and it's none other than Alvarado shaking and baking his way into the end zone. The Royals take the lead 20-18. to 
18, but hold on to your seats, folks. Morales sees Hugel, and that is a catch. Touchdown, Dons. They would score once more, and now the Dons are just having fun. Head coach Jason Bubaka, bada bing, bada boom, and the Dons win it to move into a three-way tie for second and will face undefeated Independence next week for the league lead. A big win for the Del Mar Dons, and we are going to chat about it. Give it up, guys. Yeah. Isaac Black, two touchdowns. He's our game MVP. Isaac, this was a huge win. Tell me, how big was it for you guys? It was pretty big. We, we've been waiting for this. We wanted it. We went out there and did it, you know. We've been waiting all week for it. We practiced for it, you know, and we got it. Yeah, and Oak, oh, and you are now... Six and one the first time since 07. What has been the key to this team's success? Uh, the key has mainly just been showing up to practice, working hard, um, just staying true to what we what we have to do, just doing our thing every single day. And I'm sure a big part of it has to do with the coaching staff, right? How has the coaching staff led you guys to, to your success this season? I don't think we could do anything without the coaches. They put their blood, sweat, and tears every night, every weekend to come the next morning and make us work. Okay, now, Michael, what is the ultimate goal by the time that final buzzer sounds? Just keep it going and keep it keep it going after every game, every second, and every fight. Just keep fighting with my yeah. teammates and doing everything you got to do to get the dubs. Yeah. This was a very big win to keep your guys' title hopes alive. These are the Del Mar Dons guys. Take us out with a cheer. Yeah. Hey, hey, Dons on me, Dons on three. One, two, three. Dons! The SI Wildcats getting ready to host league rival Mitty. The Monarchs down big early, but fight back. Lauren Hanniger to Tatum Corb. Quick set to Julia Cabri for the Monarchs point. Later in the first, SI with a one-point lead. Megan Yu to Sierra Tyson, who sets it back to Megan Lucy, and Megan fires it home. But Mitty takes the lead as Cabri gets it to Corb. Over to Katie Springs, and the sophomore crushes it off the block as Mitty takes the first. The Wildcats clawing back in the second. Tyson to Duke-bound senior Lizzie Fleming. She's smart, and she can hit. But Mitty will take the second. Megan Ahern to Corb to Kendra McDonald, who rips at hard angle, and Mitty has a two sets to none lead. Back comes SI in the third. Mackenzie Honey to Tyson. Outside to Lucy, who rips it down the line. That was nice. More cats as Tyson quick sets Fleming, and the Cats take this third set. It's now two sets to one. Mitty Monarchs in the lead. To the fourth, and it's Tyson to Megan Yu. Bup set to Elizabeth Held with the knuckle pokey. Held was big for the Cats in the fourth set. And St. Ignatius will take the fourth to tie the match. It's two sets apiece. Tyson to Fleming. She was fired up, and so was the bench. And we go to a fifth and deciding final set. A tight game five, but the Monarchs prevail. Hanniger to Corb outside to Megan Ahern, and Meddy wins it in five. The Monarchs and Cats now tied for second in the West Catholic League. McDonald and Cabri leading the way. Once again this season, Lexus of Stevens Creek presents the Volunteer Award, part of the Lexus of Stevens Creek commitment to promoting volunteerism. This week's Lexus of Stevens Creek Volunteer Award goes to Maria Melander from Liberty Girls Water Polo. When Maria is on land, she volunteers as a cadet for the Brentwood Police Department so she can later serve her community as a police officer. Maria talks about why she wants to devote her life to helping others. I've always had a passion for working with others and serving like my community and just keeping people safe and it just uh, brings a really big form to my heart. Very nice. Coming up, back to the East Bay League for California and San Ramon Valley. And San Leandro battles Castro Valley when 49ers Cal High Sports Support returns. Back at Levi Stadium as we head back to the East Bay League, this battle in the Mountain Division between San Ramon Valley and California. These two teams come into this game with five and two records, both featuring outstanding quarterbacks Brandon Camisa for San Ramon Valley and Matt McCreary for Cal. The Wolves and Grizzlies at San Ramon Valley in Danville Friday night. It's homecoming for the San Ramon Valley Wolves as they take on the California Grizzlies Friday night. It's 7-3 Cal as we skip into the third. QB Brandon Camisa hands it off to Tristan Sinclair who breaks left and slashes his way through. The Wolves now at the 10-yard line when Camisa drops back to survey the field and he decides to keep it himself. He dives in for the touchdown to give SRV the 10-7 lead. Into the fourth, and it was action-packed. Matt McCreary hands it off to Caden Jarvis, who powers his way through the defense for the California first down. Now Cal 20 yards out. McCreary gives the ball to Bilal Alatasi, who goes straight through traffic, and the carry is good for six. It puts the Grizzlies back ahead by four. 
Wolves now with the possession. Camisa scrambles in the backfield and fires a rocket to J.P. Murphy for a 57-yard pass to put the Grizzlies on the 10-yard line. And a few plays later, Camisa hands it to Noah Thomas. Touchdown San Ramon. Wolves up by two with one minute remaining. Cal has the possession. McCreary sends a bullet over the defense to Cameron Fitzpatrick. And the Grizzlies now at the 20-yard line. With 40 seconds left on the clock, McCreary drops back, throws a pass for Jamal Cornwell, and it is a catch. And it's the game winner for the Grizzlies. They win in 21-17. A great game from McCreary and Cornwell. The Castro Valley Trojans getting pumped up for their big matchup against San Leandro. First quarter, Michael Lewis takes a pitch and runs it for a 17-yard game, setting up Castro Valley for a field goal, 3-0 Trojans. Moving to the second, Cameron Stanley throws a short pass to Corden Cobbs, who shows off his speed. It's a big 44-yard connection for San Leandro. Asaro Aihi would then punch it in for the two-yard score, 6-3 Pirates, after the missed PAT. After a Castro Valley field goal to tie the game with under a minute left before the half, the Trojans kick it to Amari Robinson, who takes it all the way. Look at Amari go, 83 yards. San Leandro takes the lead. 14-6 after a two-point conversion to end the half. On to the fourth quarter. Now Stanley connects with Cobb for a 16-yard score. 21-6 San Leandro Pirates. Castro Valley trying to make a comeback, but the pass is going to be picked off by D.J. Bryant, who makes the catch, then dodges multiple tackles, stays on his feet, and he goes all the way to within the 20-yard line to put the Pirates in excellent field position. A great play there by number 12. Then, on the very next play, Amir al Musawir weaves through several defenders for a 16-yard score, 28-6 Pirates, and after a safety, San Leandro scores once again Stanley to his favorite receiver. It's Cobbs for a 23-yard touchdown. The Pirates getting the win behind a big night from Stanley. We head back to the pool for some girls' water polo action. Miramonte hosting San Ramon Valley. The mats come out hot in the first. Sally Fellner to Katie Lyons for the first goal of the game. Closing out the first line again, doing it for the mats. It's a 4-0 Matador lead. Moving ahead into the second, three minutes left before the half, Laney McPherson lobs it to Annie Kuster, and the Wolves trail 5-2. Abby Fleming would then finish off the half by giving her team the commanding lead with the skip shot. In the second half, Matt still in control. Lions taking advantage of the foul with this shot that gives her team the 7-3 lead. But the Wolves would make a break for it. McPherson over to Skyler Jones on the quick shot, and SRV is making a comeback. Into the fourth we go. Fleming inside to Lions with a turnaround shot, and the Mats lead it by three. Final moments of the game. Wolves fighting to stay alive down by two. Cooster wrestles for the ball, scores, but the Matadors would hold on to secure the victory over the Wolves in a close one. The final score, 9-8. Remember, you can buy the entire game from the games we showed tonight on either DVD or we'll send it to you digitally. Go to 49erscalhighsports.com to order. And be sure to follow us on social media at 49erscalhigh on Twitter and Instagram. Give us a like on our Facebook page and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube page. We'll let you know when new videos are ready to watch. One Hit Away brings us great advice on concussion prevention each week. Here's Dr. Ron Desmaris with this week's tip. No matter the game's circumstances, an athlete with a suspected concussion should be removed immediately from play. When in doubt, sit them out. Look for signs and symptoms of a concussion if the athlete has experienced a bump or blow to the head or body. Ensure that the athlete is immediately evaluated by appropriate health care professional. When removing an athlete with suspected concussion from play, the decision about returning to play should be left to the medical professional. An athlete should be removed from play the day of the suspected injury and until appropriate health care professional clears them to return to play. One Hit Away understands, your brain can change your game. Coming up, our CCS Block Construction Blockbuster game, it's the West Catholic League Showdown between Sarah and Valley Christian. And later, it's the first place game in the Mount Hamilton division as Leland meets Live Oak. <laughs> difference between possible and impossible? It's a person who believes they can, surrounded and supported by others, by us, who believe it too. U.S. Bank, 
the power of possible. The Rikers Center has long been a staple of the Bay Area sports community, offering flexible and adaptable training programs for all ages. Among their most advanced programs is Cornerstone, a training course that combines a group style training session with one-on-one -on -one supervision to optimize the training of its most elite athletes. Beginning each session with a group-based training workout, Cornerstone offers the best of both worlds. Fluid dynamic sessions followed by routine, all the while being assisted by the center's certified coaches. We got it for you, South County Chrysler Jeep Dodge Ram. The West Catholic League has four teams within one game of the league lead coming into this week's games. Two of those teams facing off with the winner still in the league title hunt. The Sarah Padres were tied for first with St. Francis coming into this game. Valley Christian just one game back. It's a huge game, so it's our block construction CCS blockbuster game, and our Chiara Biagini was there. Blockbuster game. Yeah. I'm here on the hill for the big dub cow matchup between Sarah and Valley Christian. So far, Sarah is red hot in league play, outscoring their opponents by 130 points. The Padres are getting it done on offense with our guy Luke Batari at the helm. He's completing 75% of his passes, averaging over 13 yards per pass. The Warriors are coming off a tough loss against St. Francis last week. They will look to their lead running back Isaiah McIlvain to put some numbers on the board. A big game in the West Catholic League. It's Sarah at Valley Christian in our block construction blockbuster game. We start this one with some VC defense. Oh, Judea Moon reads the quarterback keeper and comes up with the big stop. Five minutes left in the first quarter. Sarah down by a field goal. The Padres looking for a first down, but Devon Lang sniffs out the screen and strips the ball loose. Anthony Madrigal recovers the ball to give VC great field position. The Warriors take advantage of the turnover as Lang runs this one in to put Valley Christian up 10 0. The Warriors defense continuing to shut down the Padres. Skyler loving black all over this one with the big tackle. VC gets the ball back in the second quarter. Corey Taylor connects with loving black who gets brought down inside the 10. That leads to a VC rushing TD for the 17 nothing lead. Seven minutes left in the first half. The Padres trying to get something going on offense. QB Luke Batari hits Nate Sanchez up the middle. He gets brought down inside the 10, but VC blocks the attempted field goal. The Warriors closed the first half with a Lucas Ramirez field goal. He had 13 points on the night. That gave VC the 20 to nothing lead. End of the third quarter, the Padres get on the board as Batari finds Terrence Lowville in the end zone for the touchdown. But the Warriors are doing everything right tonight. Taylor hands the ball off to Lang. The senior running back shimmies through traffic. He breaks free and does not look back. 80 yards to the house. The Warriors win this one big with a final score of 37 to 6. VC now tied with Sarah in second place. Lang talks to us after the game. Coming off that hard fought game last uh, last week, seven to three, we just had to come out and bounce back and just play as hard as we could. We all were physical. We were ready to go. We were all mentally ready. We knew that this is going to be a big challenge. They're physical. They're big, and we just had to go out there and play harder than them. We all want, we all have one goal in mind. It's to play hard and just fight for your brother next to you. That's all it is. In San Jose with our blockbuster game, I'm Kiara Biagini, 49ers Cal High Sports Report. The Irvington Vikings visiting the Washington Huskies for some Wednesday night water polo. The Huskies taking an early lead. Brandon Two finds Shane Hurup for the Washington goal. Huskies are up 4-1. to one. Into the second now, Matt Mendez tosses it into Jimmy Jones, who fires it home for the Huskies. But the Vikings fight back. Cade Ross to Owen Schmitz, who bounces it in from way downtown to cut the deficit as Irvington tries to come back. Still in the second, check out this play by the Huskies. Rajvir Oboroy connects with Shane for the perfect backhand shot. Bullseye, 7-2, Washington Huskies. Here's another fine play from the Irvington Vikings this time. Urban Aberrado sets it up for Michael Mayer, who stays in control with a backhand rocket. But the Huskies too fierce in this one. Gavin Moran doing it all by himself, skipping it in. And Washington goes on to take this one 13-8 the final as the Huskies stay undefeated in the Mission Valley League. 
Each week, the Harker School celebrates its pursuit of academic excellence with the Scholar Athlete Award. This week, we honor Woodside's Nathan Yoho. Nathan is taking seven AP classes while maintaining a 4.1 GPA. Brought to you by the Harker School, this week Harker congratulates its girls volleyball team. In the last week alone, the team beat a rival and then took second place in the Notre Dame Belmont Tiger Cup, beating four teams before finally succumbing to the fifth. The results guarantee Harker a spot in the CCS playoffs. At Harker, preschool through 12th grade students discover their passions. Learn more at harker.org. Each week, Adobe brings us a tip on how to use great Adobe products to improve your highlight reel or team video. Here's this week's tip. In Adobe Premiere Pro, you can add keyboard shortcuts so you can easily adjust the keyboard to meet your individual needs. Go to Edit, then go into Keyboard Shortcuts. It will show you all of the shortcuts you have by default, but you can customize this however you wish. For example, the Razor tool is by default the C key. If you want to move it to the R for Razor, go to the application, find the Razor tool, and drag it into the R key. Hit OK, and the next time you hit R, the Razor tool is active. Just another way the Adobe Creative Suite makes it easy to make your highlight reel or team video better than all the rest. Coming up, a battle in the Mount Hamilton division as Leland meets Live Oak. But first, here is our Cupertino Electric Top 10 Power Rankings for football. Niners Cal High Sports Report is brought to you by these fine companies who care about high school sports. By Tri-Counties Bank, service with solutions. 12 locations now open in the Bay Area. By South County Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, Ram, Fiat. Drive a little, save a lot. By DGDG.com, where we want you to be a happy car buyer. And by the Sereno Group, here for good. Hi, I'm Lucy Wiedemeyer. And I'm Keith Andre. And we are both brokers with Serena Group. Many of you will remember legendary football coach Charlie Wiedemeyer, my husband, who was a champion of high school sports. And together, Keith and I support high school sports in our Bay Area. The Mount Hamilton Division has five teams within one game of first place after three league games. Two of those teams, Live Oak and Leland, meeting this week, hoping to keep their league title hopes alive at Live Oak Friday night. The wonderful Live Oak Band with the national anthem as the Acorns meet Leland. First quarter, Leland driving. Carson Yates firing to Preston Juke, who fights the defender for the ball. That led to a short TD pass, 7-0 Chargers. Just moments later, Live Oak right back as Jonathan Singleton escapes the pressure, then fires to Caleb Ojeda. Get used to that name. Kayla had a big night. We're tied at 7-all. Second quarter, Singleton looking to throw again. He hits Ojeda, and CO2 breaks a tackle, races up the sidelines avoids a final defender and scores 14 to seven. The Live Oak Acorns are in the lead. Later in the second quarter, a crazy play here as the Leland running back is stood up and somewhere in this pile, Ojeda steals the ball and he goes the other way. A fumble return, touchdown, 20 to seven Live Oak CO2. Toxic all night for the Acorns. Still in the second, Singleton scrambling, desperate to find a receiver and he finds one. It's Matt Blocker, wide open blocker, makes the catch and races is in. Live Oak leads it 27-7. to Just moments left in the half. The Chargers get the ball back. A pretty pass from Yates to Sedan Thadani. 27-14 Acorns at the half. Second half all Acorns. Play action pass. Singleton finds guess who? It's CO2. Caleb Ojeda just short of the goal line. Live Oak scores on a short run. By the way, He's a sophomore. And then fourth quarter, Singleton with a rocket to Jesse Isaias. A terrific catch, Messiah Saulo scored a short time later as Live Oak goes to 6-1 and one on the season. The Menlo girls volleyball team is having an awesome season. The Lady Knights taking some time to chat with Shanberries from 99.7 now at the Rikus Center this week. Hey, we're at the Rikus Center in Menlo Park, the premier training facility on the peninsula where goals are achieved. Hey, it's Shan from 99.7 now here with the ladies of the Menlo Volleyball Team. Woo! Yes, I would be going that crazy too. You guys are undefeated in the league right now. You guys had a huge W against Sacred Heart. Tell us about that game. Well, obviously, it's always exciting to beat our rivals, Sacred Heart, um, especially when you got the feels like the whole town is there. Um, <laughs> I'm but, sure they were. Yeah, lots of fans. It's Everyone's getting really excited, like every point. Um, 
is just like full of excitement. Thank you so much. Let's go over, over to Anna. Okay, so you, I think you guys have your strategies and goals pretty much down, but tell us about that and uh, how you ex expect to go on this season. Yeah, so um, like you said, we're undefeated in league and we hope to like carry that on into the second round, hopefully CCS and NorCal's because last year we also won league and we did pretty well um, throughout postseason. So hopefully we can keep that up and just seal the deal. Awesome. All right, well, let's go over to Siana. I like to end with traditions. Tell us about some of the Menlo Volleyball girl tradition. Before our games, we like to do some fun dancing, just pre-game to get us warmed up. Oh, wait, can you show me one of the moves? Oh, um, <laughs> yeah. do it! Let's have show it. <laughs> yeah, show it, show it, show it, show it. Oh, hey. Okay, yes, I love that tradition. I'm Shan from 99.7. Now you can catch me every morning on the Fernando and Greg show, 6 to 10 a.m. And then 10 to 2 on 99.7. Now give it up for the Menlo Girls Volleyball Team. <laughs> DGDG.com presents the Be Happy Play each week. This was a play in a game this week that made everybody happy. This week's Be Happy Play goes to the St. Ignatius Wildcats, Sierra Tyson to Lizzie Fleming for the kill to force a fifth set. And we got some jump in and some belly bumps. They were pretty happy. Go to DGDG.com to find out how you can be a happy car buyer. Coming up, it's the service by Medallion Play of the Week. Some great plays this week. We'll see who gets it next. But first, here's this week's training tip by our good friends at the Rikers Center. Hi, I'm Coach Davon. Today's training tip is an altitude drop. Can be used to help with kids landing stability and their coordination. So what they're going to do is just take one foot, step off of the box, and land in an athletic position. The winner of the service by medallion play of the week gets a hat, these lovely headphones, wireless of course, and an invitation to our 49ers prep end of the season awards banquet right here at Levi Stadium. We'll show you some really good contenders and then award this week's play of the week. Of the week. We start with Del Mar's Fernando Vargas with a big catch and a big game. In the water now, it's Michael Mayer who's getting mugged but still fires at home with the backhand. Here's Mackie Gervais for Clayton Valley. He's really good. Look at 21. Breaking tackles across the field all the way into the end zone. And that is a touchdown for the Eagles. But the play of the week goes to Justin Anderson. Look at the one-handed spectacular interception. One more time, Justin Anderson from Menlo Atherton with a great interception for the play of the week. That's the play of the week, and that's our 49ers Cal High Sports Report for this week. Thanks for watching. I'm Robert Bronstein. And I'm Aubrey Tolliver. Be sure to join us next week to meet a set of twins who have faced a difficult path. We will see you next week.